and Ray Buffer discuss writing in some of Ray's over 70 theatrical and television roles. Ray, how are you? I'm very good, sir. How are you? I'm, I'm doing super duper. I'm going to read the cool introduction. I'm a writer if I haven't already said that. Oh. Oh. So I've, I've written an introduction by copying it off of IMDb and then moving some of the sentences around, which that, that's... that's that's plagiarism. <laughs> I plagiarized an introduction for you then. Thank you. <laughs> so Ray Buffer, you've appeared in over 70 films and TV shows, including my favorites, Old Scroll, Curb Your Enthusiasm, NYPD Blue, JAG, CSI Miami, The X-Files, and most recently, briefly, Bullet Train. <laughs> <laughs> you grew up yeah. in South Florida, which is very close to actually where I am right now. Um, you're a working actor, which is a big deal, if, if anyone knows what that means. A vocalist. You've also served as a producer, director, and the music director. And if I understand right, music is a passion of yours. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about writing in the industry. Cool. Cool. So what are you working on now, right? Right now, um, I am waiting for a couple of projects to come out that I have worked on. I just finished um, a three episode uh, proof of concept um, called um, The Bitch Diaries. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, called uh, The Runs and uh, a short film called uh, The Bitch Diaries. Um, but both of those projects were happening simultaneously, so I get mixed up. But um, they're, they're both uh, kind of comedy, comedy, serial com comedy. Um, and in the, uh, the Bitch Diaries, I played an Uber driver. In the runs, I play a um, CEO of a film company. Um, so, you know, it was kind of fun to go between the two and have them kind of like one weekend I'm here, one weekend I'm there, one weekend I'm back here. So um, those just ended. I'm going to be in um, Shock Docs which is on, I think, the Discovery and Travel Channels um, for an episode called The Curse of Robert the Doll. Uh, I'll be reenacting um, the current curator, Robert the Doll. He's a talking head on the docuseries. Then they cut to live action uh, recreations of stories oh, okay. that he's yeah. telling. And so I will play him in the recreation. So that's coming up around the 30th. Um, also in the new Netflix GameStop documentary, um, uh, that should also be coming around the same time, just playing a Republican politician for some of the B-roll, but um, some fun stuff, some interesting, diverse projects. Now, you, you stay very busy. How, how do you stay so busy? You know, uh, I think part of the craft is, and part of the work, most of the work, is getting the work. So yeah, uh, after I've learned to be disciplined to um, submit for things every single day, follow up on, on submissions, do my self tapes, uh, schedule my auditions, know where I'm going, get everything, all my all my ducks in a row, uh, and just be consistent with it. Um, I, I think that's that's half the battle. You know, a lot of people talk themselves out of auditioning or being an actor because they think, oh well, I'll never, I'll never succeed, or they'll, they'll never, they'll, I'll never get hired, or I'll, I'll never get work, or I'll never get enough work. And so it's self-defeating by, by even just saying that you've eliminated the possibility that you will. Right. Well, and we're going to talk about writing. So what is it when, what, what is it you like as a, as an actor when you get the script, which was written by a writer, what, what is it that, that you like, you know, in this, in the script, or is there a style that you like or, or something that draws you to it? Yeah. And then all, conversely, are there things that you like notes or where they try and tell you what the character is doing, you know, is, are there things you don't like or, or that might turn you off? Yeah. I mean, when I look at something, someone's written, the first thing I look for is, is everything spelled right? <laughs> You would be surprised. I mean, even in, in like job <laughs> postings, you know, some people will just have really poor grammar and not spell things correctly. And it's like, I, I scratch my head. Do I even want to audition for this? Do I even want to submit for this? Because this this probably is just a taste of what's to come. Um, so that's, uh, no, joking aside, that's what I look for. Um, and then I've tried writing and I've found that at least from my perspective, write what you know is a good adage. Yeah. You know, I, I've read I've read scripts written by a 19 year old about a, a a commercial airline pilot, you know. And unless that 19 year old's actually been a commercial airline pilot, or their dad's a commercial airline pirate, pi, a pilot, or they've done research, um, it comes across as someone writing what they don't know, and that's something I look for too. Is is it an informed script? 
that does it does it make logical sense um are they skipping over things because they don't know that detail and it still works because maybe i don't need to see what buttons that airline pilot is pushing on his panel maybe we just say okay he's in the plane then we see the plane take off but we don't have to see him you know working the controls and, and that's a logical you know leap you know as long as it works cinematically um but yeah, I don't mind. I, I like it when a writer puts a lot of detail about the character in place. But I think too, as an actor, I'm bringing a little of myself into that character. And so I think there's a compromise that has to take place and a conversation that has to happen with the director. And you have to realize that it's collaborative and that there's gonna be a piece of Ray in that character. There's also gonna be a piece of what the writer intended in that character. It's gonna be a piece of what the director wants in that character. And the three need to kind of work in harmony. Depending on how heavily, you know, you're involved in a particular production, how confident and comfortable are you looking at a piece of dialogue you have to say and, and taking it back and saying, you know what, I want to change this. I want to change this. Or do you think about this? Or do you do, you do that? Or do you just pretty much oh, take it? I do it. I'm, 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 a, I'm a squeaky wheel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and sometimes I don't get the grease, you know, sometimes yeah. I, I, I'll get rebuffed and then they'll say, well, no. They re we really want it this way. And, and sometimes a good director will take you to the side and they'll say, okay, well, I understand your point and why it doesn't feel right. This is the writer's point. And this is what we want for the character. So maybe it may make sense for, for Ray to do it this way, but we want this character to kind of end up as kind of the loser and, and not save face at the end of the scene. So, you know, as long as that conversation can happen and be real, I think where people get disgruntled or, or, or offended or, or saddened by the process is when, when those conversations don't happen. It's just like, just do what I say when I say to do it. And it's like, okay, well, this isn't fun anymore, you know? Yeah, and the work is hard enough, right? There, it, it can't just be all work. There has to be some ability to put yourself in it. Or, or to your point, at least get, you know, I think that's the way the human brain works. As long as we know that our ideas were heard, um, we don't necessarily have to win every argument or every, everyone hang on every word we say, but at least it's a discussion because that because that vests you more into what they're trying to get, right? Um, so I think, I think we all want the best product, right? So it's it's all it's like we all have the best intentions, um, but we're looking at it from different perspectives. I, I've heard, and they say this it's, this is true about books. I, I've written books, and I've gotten many not what they call less than wonderful reviews, but I never, I didn't set out to write a bad book. It just, it just didn't, you know, resonate for that person. And I think when you get into the type of productions that you're involved in, there are so many people involved and no one is there trying to do a bad job. Everyone's trying to do a good job. Um, so yeah, you have to be able to collaborate in, in, in all those things. You know, you know, speaking of that, and you've been on lots of different kinds of shows, like Curb Your Enthusiasm was one, then you've been on more straight scripted shows. Has, has the writing style changed? Are you seeing any changes in the industry in the past 10 or 15 years? Oh, I think definitely. I think reality TV has changed uh, things for everyone. I think, I think you see fewer sitcoms out there now. I mean, I, I can't remember the last sitcom I've watched with a laugh track, with a real laugh track. I actually worked on a sitcom recently and they actually hire the audience. So that frees them up. It used to be when you worked on a sitcom, you have to go during the day, you rehearse all day long, take a break for dinner, come back at night, the studio audience arrives and now then you do it a couple of times in front of multiple cameras for a live studio audience. Now that they, they hired the, the audience in earlier in the day. And so you rehearse it and then you shoot it and then you rehearse it and then you shoot it and you work your way through the script that way and you're done before dark. Wow. So I, it's, it, it's a time saver. Um, but it's also, you know, it's like, well, why even have the studio audience there anymore? You, you know, if, if, if you're, if you're cheating the concept and you're bringing in a hired audience, it's kind of like, well, we're doing it because it's uh, it's an expectation that's been built in by history, by what we've watched in the past. Interesting. Now, now what about shows where you have um, where, where you know you have improv moments or you have scenes they drop you into versus a, you know a straight up script? Yeah, I mean, I, you see that. I mean, Curb Your Enthusiasm is a great example. It's probably one of the first ones that 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 relied heavily on that um, where you know the actors basically have a broad outline of you know what what the story is what the elements what the beats are where you want to end it um, what the ending action is but then everything in between is kind of left to the actors to bounce off of each other and and explore 
the circumstance. And then I guess the real writing must happen in the editing room by the editor because they get all <laughs> these pieces of possibilities and then they decide, okay, well, I like this possibility, this possibility, this, let's glue that together. There's a scene, Interesting. you know? Um, yeah. So it, it's a fun experience. Uh, I got to meet, um, you know, Larry David, obviously, and David Schwimmer and uh, Ben Stiller and Mel Brooks all in that season that I worked on. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, talk about talent. Yeah, the, the those, I, and it, it takes a special kind of skill, I think, to not, not, I mean, anyone can improvise, you know, in short spurts, but to be able to do a prolonged improvisation and and to actually have the listening skills necessary to hear what someone else is doing and bounce off of them, because that's so important in improv. Some people think, oh, it's all about me. I, I want to say something funny. Oh, I want to do this. But someone has to decide to be the straight man. Someone has to decide to be the listener, you know, and, and sometimes you have to do all those things at the same time. I took, I took, I, I had to take like uh, an acting improv class a long time ago in college. I don't remember anything. I was terrible. I didn't want to be an actor. But what they told me was say yes to everything. And if you get stuck, just repeat back what you think you heard last. Is that at all good advice? Yeah. I mean, those, those are kind of the basics that get you back on track. Um, really? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, maybe I'll have to go practice my improv at some point. Yeah, because, um, you know, you don't want to you don't want to say, oh, yeah, well, you know, then a chicken pecked my eyes out and you don't want you don't want someone to then say, well, no, there's no chickens around here. What are you talking about? You just shut down their, their whole thing. You didn't say yes to everything. You, you shut them down. So now that person's got to go back, you know, the square one and and say, OK, well, maybe it wasn't a chicken. Maybe it maybe it was a, a pigeon, you know, you know yeah, and come up with something. Else, but. But it's yeah, if your scene partner is like working against you, that it can it can kill an improv. We I watched a, whose line is it anyway? And there, there was a line Ryan Styles he had to say he can only say who wants a hug and that's my job. And and my wife and I still I and mean, that was like twenty years ago and we still anything you know, we'll still use that same stupid little sequence of events because um, good improv can really stick with you. Yeah, th that show is amazing. I love I love watching those episodes and it's timeless. You know, you can you can turn it on 20 years later and it's still going to get you, you know, get you going. Right. Very good. All right. Well, Ray, look, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, is there any uh, big project that you're looking forward to that you're not working on yet that you want to plug yourself for? Maybe someone will watch it. Um, not especially. And I think I mentioned the the two shows at the end of the month that I'm in. Um, yeah. You can always type Ray Buffer into the magic Google machine. <laughs> Lots of things will come up and uh, you can watch them on YouTube or or hit me up online or, uh, you know, check out my IMDb page. Uh, my agents and my managers, they're all listed there. If you happen to be someone who who needs a big six foot four middle aged full beard guy <laughs> with a deep voice. Yeah, I didn't tell you we're. I'm actually older than you, but not by a lot. I, you know, so uh, you have to be, yeah, as an actor, you have to put your birthday out there. I don't have to put mine out there. So it's all good. True, true. Good for you. Stay <laughs> right, a writer. Ray. I'm going to absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Ray, thank you very much. It's been an honor and pleasure talking to you. Same to you. Thank you for watching. Please consider hitting the subscribe button.